bright lights coming up first tonight, and it's walk show on. And Mr. Uh, Cook is going to be in charge of the meeting tonight because Mr. Cohen could not be with us. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, uh, this evening we have Brian Yearling and Wendy um, and the team coming up uh, to present um, uh, some updates on the Waukesha One Initiative. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm Laura Bush. I'm an instructional technology coordinator part of the time and then a technology integrator at Blair Elementary. Brian, you're like instructional tech coordinator at the secondary level um, all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Liskin, instructional technology coordinator. So this evening, we're just going to provide you with some updates on some of the things that have been going on this year with Waukesha One and um, give you an idea of where we're headed moving forward. We thought we'd start off tonight um, talking about the Waukesha One conference, which was um, in January. So this was a con conference that we offered for all of our district employees. Um, we had brought in some keynote speakers. We had um, sessions led by teachers. We had some poster sessions. We had a rock star stage, and you can see a photo um, on the slide up on the top is our um, rock star stage. We also had um, an I commit um, statement that all of our staff members had um, at the end of the session, and that you can see those posters on the bottom. So overall, it was a very positive event. During and after, we had a lot of positive feedback that we received from the event. Everything went really well. We did survey the staff after um, the event was done, and again, had really overwhelmingly positive results. 93% um, felt it was a valuable PD opportunity. 95% learned something new that they will use with their students, and 96% enjoyed their overall day at the conference. Specific feedback for the sessions, and our sessions were led by our own teachers. We had 131 teachers that were presenters, and they offered over 100 different sessions. Many of the presenters um, had never presented anything before, um, especially related to technology. So these weren't necessarily teachers that were known as kind of technology um, leaders in their school, but they came forward and did a really great job presenting that day. So specific feedback um, on the sessions. 95% of the survey respondents said the sessions were of interest to them. 99% said the presenters, again, some teachers who had never presented before, were prepared, organized, and knowledgeable about their content and topic. And 95% said, said the presenters inspired them to try or learn or try something new. We had 251 staff members that completed this survey, so those are pretty impressive numbers that almost every single one of them felt so positively about the event. So overall, we felt like it went really well. We definitely um, learned some things and are looking um, to change up a few things to make it run even more smoothly next year, and we're planning to run a similar event again next January. I think one of the unique things about the conference, too, is that we captured all of the presenters' sessions, and um, many of them made a short video clip kind of explaining what their session was about. And those are all housed in our Blackboard system, so they're available to our staff to go back and review or say, I couldn't get in that hour because it was so crowded, and be able to still kind of see and catch up and maybe touch base with somebody on that learning later on. Just kind of an update on where we are with rollouts. It's really um, easy for us to kind of say, oh, we're done. We've got the devices out there, and um, you know everybody should be seeing wonderful changes in their classroom. At this point in time, all of our K-12 staff have devices in hand. This spring, we had our Wave 4 uh, schools receive their student devices. So we have three elementaries that rolled out just this spring in April, or February and March, and did their pieces. And we still have two schools that will roll out in September for Hadfield and Lowell will be our last wave of students receiving their devices. There's also many rollouts that will be happening at each of our schools as new students get their devices. And either our kindergarten or our second graders receive their permanent iPad for the first time, depending on the school 
um, and the way that they roll out. So pretty much almost every second grade group is a new rollout where they start with their Apple IDs and taking responsibility for their devices at that point in time. So we're not done yet. <laughs> it's definitely something that is ongoing and continuing. And as we look for changes in the things we're seeing in our school, we need to look at the fact that some of these people are three months into it and some are two years into it. So uh, just kind of a refresh on that. One of the things that we've been really working with in our professional growth and looking at that use of technology is the SAMR model. And most of you have heard us talk about that in the past. Um, this is just kind of an illustration as we start talking with people about what SAMR really is. It's from that piece of actually not being a tech user and just kind of wondering what's out there and available to that piece where the technology allows us to do some of the same things we've always done. Instead of students writing in a paper notebook, they might be typing on their iPad and using that as their device to accomplish the same kinds of tasks in the past. When we get into augmentation, the tech really does add something to that task. It changes um, the job at hand, so to speak. So now we might be snorkeling instead of just sitting on the raft on top of the water. We're actually able to get underneath and take a look around and, and do things more um, improved functionally over what we were doing before. When we start getting into that modification, the actual lesson is really starting to change. And it's things that can happen because that technology is there and a part of our atmosphere and what we're doing. And so it's really a kind of a different stage. And then we talk about that redefinition, where the tech really allows for a new task that we could not have done at all before without the technology. We've been working with that this year as we've done our staff development and working with others, and that's kind of a model that you'll hear us continue to talk about as we look towards our future um, professional development and looking at how our technology is being used in our classroom to show growth for our staff and our students. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is uh, we've come to this before. We've talked about SAMR before. This is going to be the language that will really help us to, to talk about where we are at in our adoption. Somebody who's brand new to the technology is probably going to be more at that substitution level. Somebody who's never used it before or trying it for the first time. So as you're having conversations with your constituents, with teachers, with administrators, this is a really good um, framework to begin to understand because you can start saying, you know, how deep are we really digging with this with, with the tools that we have and what are we doing differently than we used to do before this is a framework that we're increasingly going to be focusing on um, with teachers and administrators as well so this language will be important and valuable to you which is why we're going to bring it up tonight one of the things that we've been taking a look at is how these tools really support our literacy strategies we know that literacy is a major goal in our district and obviously we want that tool to be able to enhance what we're already trying to do with our curriculum and with our student learning. So we've really looked at the core apps and how they can enhance the instruction in literacy areas. One of the things that we are seeing is some of the digital thoughtful logs. We're seeing a lot more of the annotating and interacting with digital texts and students being able to um, work with text in kind of a different format and get some of those same skills and things. We're also looking at the way that students can explain and show evidence of their thinking. And obviously rubrics and feedback provide a valuable tool for our students in understanding what they know and can do already and what they need to continue to work on. And these are all things that are supported by our Waukesha One tools at this point. So the first strategy that we're going to take a little deeper look at is making thinking visible. Um, so students are using their iPads to show, explain, and reflect on their learning, which then creates an accountability for students to demonstrate their thinking and progress, progress toward meeting their goals for learning targets. The app that really allows students to do this is the Explain Everything app. So this is a whiteboard app that allows students to add text, drawing, images, video, um, and record not only audio, but they can record all of their on-screen um, movements as well. So this is a um, video from a Hi, my name is Mia. This is the app that will explain everything. This is the math problem, and I can explain my ideas in there, and I can solve the problem, and I can show it to my teacher if it's right or not right. Hi, my name is Dulce, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys how to um, use Explain Everything. And when we are done with our, like, when we are doing the centers, we do our work, and then we take a picture of it, 
and when in Fridays we show our evidence to the teacher. She's able to press the record button and she can record everything that she's drawing on the screen as she's also explaining it and then she can send that to her teacher so her teacher can see um, how she solved the problem and every step of her problem solving strategy. Um, and then with the second example, um, these students are using the app Explain Everything to show their evidence of thinking through centers that they work on during the week. Um, so it's again holding them accountable for um, their work throughout the week. And then at the end of the week, they put all of their pictures from the work that they did in their centers onto this um, graphic organizer and explain everything and then they record themselves explaining the I can statements for each center and then again they can send that to their teacher. Another strategy for um, us in our literacy work are thoughtful logs. It really allows students to organize their thinking. It shows their habits of reading and comprehension. It allows them to record evidence of their learning, and it also allows them that piece of making their thinking visible so that, that teachers and instructors know what it is that they are processing as they're working through those. One of the tools that we use with um, the Thoughtful Logs has been Book Creator. It creates a digital book or document for students. It incorporates text and images. It records audio and video. And it also allows them to use a mic and a camera for easy media capture of what they're working with or what they're thinking about at that point in time. So Book Creator has been used quite a bit for some of the thinking logs and things that are being done in multiple kinds of classes, not just in our writing or reading classes, but also in some of our language classes and other areas just to be able to incorporate that work into what they're doing. So uh, one of the things that we have talked a lot about this year with our focus on literacy is a, a focus on annotation. And hopefully you see kind of in all of the examples, these are things that, you know, the strategies we're talking about are things that are being brought forward by the CNI department. They're things that are being talked about by teachers and, and principals and students. Like these are the real world applications. And I think the big leap that we're, we're trying to hopefully make for you is that the tools that we had, which in some cases people are just getting to use, and in some cases, which they've had a year and a half, two years to, to get used to, are fitting really nicely with the strategies that, that they want to ultimately kind of implement in their classroom. So the technology is not driving our strategy choice. Our strategies for learning are the focal point, and the technology is kind of the supplemental piece that's allowing that to happen. So uh, annotation being one of those strategies, uh, think about when you read a textbook and you, you mark that up and make notes in the columns, right? Student, students learning to read more effectively, learning their content areas a little bit more deeply, also requiring them to read a little bit closer. And so one of the tools that we're really focusing on is iBooks Author. It's a tool that's used on the MacBook by teachers and it allows them to really create um, unique customized text that students can dig into. It helps guide them, it helps scaffold their thinking. So um, go ahead and hop through the next one. So this is an example of a, uh, an article that we found on a site that automatically um, allows students, it, it takes the text from a newspaper article and it levels it to the student's appropriate level. And then on top of that, so not only are we giving kids the right text at the right level, but on top of that what the teacher is doing is putting in, you can see in the left hand example, uh, putting in images so that we promote some of that visual literacy piece. On the far left hand side, one of the annotation strategies this teacher was, was teaching uh, was to highlight the text in different colors. Each, each annotation or each highlight has a different purpose. And so throughout this entire article, what they've done is they've put this guide in there just to remind kids of the things you should be looking for. So having given a student something to read before, you hope they remember those things. Here, what we're able to do is actually build that guide right into it as they're reading the actual text. And then you can see the annotations that are made there um, are the colored text. And that would be what the student has actually highlighted. And it's really hard to see, but on the far left-hand side, there's a little post-it note. Uh, one of the things that's always been a struggle with digital text and annotating it is actually making meaningful notes on that. So just like a sticky would be, or a post-it note would be in a physical book, here you have an example of um, that little pink box in the far left corner is actually the student's thinking, and they can click on that and pop it up. On the far right, then how do kids get this out? How do they share it? How do the teachers see it? How do they assess it? So those 
those annotations and the highlights that the teachers or that the students made can be shared out on the right hand side you see notes from poverty and pregnancy the article that they were using in iBooks author and then this is shared back with the teachers so they can see instantaneously what kinds of uh, annotations the students are making what those notes are specifically on the post-it so really closes the circle and as somebody who uh, taught and had kids read a lot of articles it really closes the circle about what kids are actually saying in those notebooks that they're you know you try to get around and look at them all but here I can actually go and look at it and physically have a copy of it to, to see what in that article they found to be important so go ahead and slow. So another strategy um, that we've been focusing on with literacy and then connected with um, Waukesha for Learning are rubrics and feedback. So providing um, students with, ru with rubric, rubrics sorry, so that they um, have a clear learning target, um, also with quality and formative and summative assessments, and giving them the opportunity to receive um, feedback from their teachers and be able to respond to that feedback. So we've been using um, core apps such as Shobi and Google Drive, and then also our Blackboard um, management system to um, share rubrics and provide feedback. So this allows teacher to share assignments, instructions, and um, resources with students. And then students can also ask clarifying questions. They can add voice or text notes and submit work to their teachers in a variety of different formats, PDFs, videos, pictures, um, all of those different formats with their teacher to then get feedback from. These are some examples um, of rubrics and feedback with the core app. So the example on the left um, is, it's that same example of the Blair student that was showing you the Explain Everything project. So she took that project and um, sent it to her teacher in Shobi. And then her teacher was able to open it up on her iPad in Shobi and um, view her work. And then it's kind of hard to see, but in the lower right-hand corner um, of that document on the left is the teacher feedback. So she's able to um, give her a score and give her some feedback based on her work. So then the student could go back and um, revise, add, or edit if needed based on that feedback. And then the example on the left is a rubric that was created in Google Docs and posted in um, Blackboard. So again, it's giving students access to these rubrics at all times so that they know what their learning targets are. Um, and then since it was created in Google Docs, anytime that rubric is um, updated or revised at all, it is automatically updated so the student has um, updated access to that. So just some ideas of kind of what's, what's next for us. We talked about the SAMR model, and our focus really is continuing on the professional development. Um, when I think about where we were a year and a half ago with those first school, two years ago with those first schools, and what were we even going to do with these things and the questions that were asked, all of the examples that we've shared with you tonight are real examples that real teachers and real students in our district are, are using to support the instructional work. So I think our professional development to date has been pretty effective, and we're really moving in a direction where people are not only learning, but they're also teaching each other. And that's why we started with the focus on the Waukesha One conversation. Over 100 teachers in our district taught others, and they found that to be a valuable, um, you know, valuable opportunity to learn from each other. They are able to support professional development between each other. When you look at the spring technology survey that we do, one of the most impressive things that I see in that data is that Upwards of 60, 70 percent of our staff are saying that they are feeling supported to taking risks and trying new things with the technology in their classroom. They're buddying up with each other in that data. So there's some really powerful um, feedback that we're getting about the professional learning part and about the risk taking piece. Now we're going to work uh, with Summer Math Institute and the Literacy Institute are coming up. What we're really excited about is having a voice in some of that to say, how is the technology going to integrate? Because if we're just doing technology for the sake of doing technology, we've kind of missed the point. So the real, the real point is when we focus on the Math Institute or Literacy Institute or whatever the instructional focus is, how does that tech support it? And so we're excited to be a part of that conversation about what kinds of you know, sessions are going to be offered, what's going to be the focal point. And that's why we showed you examples from our literacy uh, end of, of the spectrum tonight, what we're doing with technology to support literacy. We'll continue our learning at PSI as we have been doing for a number of years and people who feel they need that support face to face is there. We also actually have um, some online self-paced courses that we're, that we're offering just to give people who maybe haven't had that experience a different way to access the learning where they don't have to come and meet with us face to face through the whole course that connect with us on the front end and on the back end 
Um, but it's another way that we're supporting professional development and giving teacher flexibility uh, that'll meet their schedule. And then of course, as, as Wendy mentioned at the beginning, that one conference is coming back around in January. And that'll be a great opportunity for us to really mark kind of where the growth points have been. One of the opportunities from the one conference where people were committed to trying something that they had learned on that day. And so it'll be a really neat opportunity for us to see what kinds of sessions this fall are proposed for that one conference based on the commitments that were made in this, this following or this previous January. So um, some pretty exciting things that are, that are happening to help our professional growth, which ultimately is gonna aid in our professional practice. And that's it. That's what we have for you tonight. Questions, Mr. Baumgard. A comment, maybe, and then a question. Uh, Steve uh, Schloman mentioned in our technology meeting the other night uh, on your SAMR, uh, kind of trying to evaluate the staff as to where they are and, prog and progressing. And I think that was so interesting that maybe you could comment on for for anybody else so that comment on you know how we want to see the the negative growth at the S and the positive growth at, at the M and the R. So in the, in the SAMR model, which is the same results that we get back on that technology profile, which we surveyed about 822 staff members. So it's, a, it's an enormous population um, that we've surveyed. And what we saw happen, and what we really want to see happen, is substitution means you just use the technology some of the time, if even that, right? You're not using it meaningfully. It's not changing what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's really, we don't want to be in that place for very long, but everybody has to start there. If I give you something you've never seen before, you start by figuring out, like, what does this do and can it do what I've always done? So that's substitution. The negative growth that Bill's uh, referring to, though, is the idea that we want to see people get out of that substitution. When they leave substitution, they have to go somewhere else, which means they're using the technology more meaningfully, they're using it at a deep le deeper level, and it, they're starting to challenge themselves to say, could I do something or have my students do something totally different than what we've always done with it? And so what we're seeing across the board in all the areas that we check is that that substitution level is shrinking. Um, in some of the categories, shrinking significantly, 11, 12%, for instance, in our media categories. Some of them are a little bit smaller than that. But what that says is that we're trying new things and that people are moving beyond I'm just dabbling with it stage into something a little bit deeper than that. So, Thank you. Karen. Thank you. Can we, or maybe just I, I don't know if you guys want one, but um, can we have a copy of the visual of the SAMR, like the definition and descriptions Absolutely. slide that you saw us? Absolutely, yeah. I think that helps us as we're describing it and explaining it to people that we can move through that. I mean, I'm trying to write it with words, but I think it looks much better. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about seeing the scuba diver in there that yes. you start to get, okay, that's something that takes a little bit more knowledge and effort to do, yes. Right. Um, Mary Jo, do you think we could include that in the packet Friday? Okay, great. Good suggestion, Karen, thank you. Okay, I have a few questions. Um, you know, you're talking about the strategies, and to me it's, it sounds kind of complex for, you know, K-1 students, but I see that that was, I think the student from Blair was the second grader. So would you say those strategies are probably more successfully used by um, middle and upper elementary students, of course, in middle school and high school? I just can't imagine that a five-year-old can, can respond accordingly. So I guess, I'd, I guess I'm going to have to see that. I think and one of the neat things with it is that having that audio feature mm -hmm. so often levels the playing field for so many of our students. So our K-1s oftentimes are simply getting a note in there or a letter or a picture of something, but then they can lay their audio over the top so we still get to see what it is they were thinking or what their processing was on that particular task. We've had our um, kindergartners and first graders be extremely successful with things and um, working with iMovie and things that normally we wouldn't say you'd see that low. Okay, good. Did you have a question or comment? Okay, then secondly, um, I'm wondering if we should offer opportunities for our substitute teachers to participate in our professional development. Some of them are long-term subs and I, I, you know, I personally know someone who is doing a long-term sub job and is lost. So I'm wondering, you know, that's, that's a long period of time for the student to go without using those computers as they would with their regular teachers. So, so have, been, have there been any thought given to that? 
There has been. We did invite all of our substitute teachers to attend the Waukesha One Conference. They okay. were included in that Good. invite. Good. Um, just on Friday with the Professional Development Day, uh, Laura and I provided uh, staff development for aides throughout the district Good. whose principals wanted to send them on the Good. core apps so that they were able to get in and experience that and do some of that learning because mm -hmm. we know that they are supporting those staff members right. as well. And obviously we open up anything we have to any of our substitutes. Right, but I meet with them their first orientation session and talk about where some of our online learning is available for them whenever they have the time and can um, get in to do that, but then also any of the classes and things are open. Did you say we have an orientation for subs every year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Several. But it's volunteer, correct? The orientation itself is not. They come in it's and not. meet with Lori Kiley from the HR office and go through some things. and. Um, we present a little bit on the technology, and Sarah drewzwicky has been really awesome on presenting for special ed and coming in and Good. working in those classrooms for substitutes. So it's very short and sweet, but it lets them know where some of those resources are available to well, them. That's good. Um, what would you say, you know, it looks like there are some very successful outcomes as, as you've described, um, but how would you describe that to a member of the community who doesn't understand all of that, um, you know, uh, specific information related to technology. How would you explain the outcome? I think one of How the th successful it's been. Yeah, I think one of the things that we're really proud of at this point is when people ask the question, why are you giving kids iPads? Or what, what's this technology right. for, right? Their immediate, their immediate thought is, it's just technology for the sake of technology. We're just doing this because mm -hmm. that's what everybody thinks is important mm -hmm. right now. And the real focal point for us is getting past the point of focusing on the technology. We think it adds efficiency. We know it adds some engagement levels for the students, right? Kids are just more meaningfully engaged in the work. They get to be more creative. They get to access in the moment. And so what we're really proud of is that the technology in many classrooms is taking a backseat to the instructional practice. And they're trying to, they're really trying to adapt the technology to support that work to get mm -hmm. kids more excited about what they do, give them a different way of what, of, you know, show what they know, play a little bit more to their strength. So I think that that's a real success that anybody can understand is that you don't have to do school the way we've always done school mm -hmm. because the technology can support right. it. And we're right. getting to the point to, the teachers are really starting to understand that. They're understanding how we can maybe shape this a little bit differently. We're not all in. Uh, we wouldn't pretend like everything's, you know, <laughs> roses as far as everybody just gets it magically. But I think that the really important part is we're seeing growth in that direction. And that to me is the big success that, that we're seeing. How do we block students during class time from doing their own thing on the computers? Because I'm sure that does happen from time to time. We'd be foolish if we thought it didn't. Yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of questions. We think sometimes that just because there's a there's there's a way to push an off button on something, we can just stop human behavior. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, it's, it's walking up to a student and, and saying, "Hey, what are you doing on that right now?" It's uh, maybe taking the iPad away. It's coming up with a really good classroom management strategy, like "Apples up, Wendy," and she's got to flip it over because not, I mean it's that simple kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that can be a really really simple strategy that really empowers the teachers. Uh, the other thing that I think is important is because we own the devices, we're not gonna play this game of can I take that away from you or not. Our teachers are empowered to take the device sure. away when it becomes sure. a problem. Sure. Uh, we also have a, a tool called Casper Focus, which can help in some cases where they can just, for a particular student who might be having an issue, they can lock them into certain apps. So there's a range of solutions, but a lot of those are human to human, face to face of contact course, Of course, of course. Well, I just, you know, was hoping that, you know, we're, we're certainly aware of it. I, yeah. I can't imagine being a classroom teacher that you wouldn't be aware of it, but we are aware of it, and so we take steps to try to stop it, right? A lot okay. of our conversations around that. How do you how do you manage your classroom okay. more effectively? Yeah. Well, I guess I just would have one, one suggestion, and that is I think we need to communicate to the community um, more often about how successful we have been with using computers, because I know there's a misunderstanding out there. When I, you know, meet people that aren't associated with education, they they wonder why a district would spend so much money on giving each student, you know, an iPad and not understanding um, what a useful learning tool it is. So I think we need to communicate that in ever in any way we can about the, you know, how successfully it is it's been. Karen, did you have a question or comment? Yes, and if you can just teach us, like as you have today and with the SAMR um, visual, 
how to explain it to them. Do you not hear me? I know. Um, because we're probably the people that get asked the most. And then to try to explain it to someone who is far removed from the school and um, maybe one of our senior citizens that just doesn't, doesn't understand. And um, yeah, so the more you can teach us how to, I mean, I'm sure Pat can probably, um, he's Mr. Tech, but yeah, someone like me. And I, and I also thank you for all the um, support that you do give our teachers. When you said, you know, we're not all there, but we see how much um, professional development and, and all the, um, the workers that you have, how many are in your department now that anyone can call up at any time and, and you guys will walk you through? Walk, walk us through. I think I have Steve on my speed yeah. dial because <laughs> I'm constantly with this thing. There's something wrong. So, um, how many how many are in your department now that are on call? If anyone needs you, it's a tough thing to say. I don't. It, it, it kind of depends on where you're headed. There are um, three of us that are the instructional technology staff that um, work out of here. We have some, a couple in buildings that are responsible for that duty. But then we also have our tech support staff who are the you know, Q&A for the working and fix it and um, doing all of those kinds of things for us as well. So it's a, it's a big team effort. Well, thank you. I'm assuming, but I, I, maybe, I would think the board would be invited to participate in your summer PSI. I just wanted to Absolutely. be sure of that. Yeah. Absolutely. We'd so love to have you. Through, through our you know, weekly packets, et cetera, keep us updated as to when that is so we can mark that off on our calendars and hopefully attend some of it because that's a great learning experience. Mr. Baumgart. Yeah, I'd like to comment on the community piece of it a little bit. Um, I'm sure there are people out there with the questions. A couple years ago, we had a wonderful group of uh, teachers and students at, at one of our high schools for the community to come in and see what we're doing. Unfortunately, the community wasn't that interested in coming in to see what we're doing, which is sad because then it can be critical of us if they don't try to learn what we're doing. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to try that again or not. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Uh, it'd be nice if we could get the community to uh, try and find out. But I, I would also offer that if, there's ever, if, if you ever run into somebody that's really wondering about it, I know that any one of our schools would be welcome to those community members to come in and see what we're doing. Of uh, course. Uh, I have, uh, there is no resistance in any of our schools for people coming in and, and getting a, a shot at what we're doing over there to see the positive part of it. And I, I know I've, I've learned so much by going to the classes and seeing it. Yeah. And if, if you run in to some community member that has its doubts, set it up so that they can come in and see what we're doing because we don't have to be ashamed of it. Oh, absolutely not. But it's easy to criticize and, and have doubts if you don't know anything about it. So we just need to... Challenge them. <laughs> right. But we need to continue to offer learning opportunities. Karen, did you have something you want to say? Yes. Um, a community member said to me, and I don't know how we can solve this with technology, but she said she left a note for someone to take care of her dog or something. And two days later, she came back, and the the high school student didn't know how to read cursive so had no idea how to take care of the dog and I don't understand how um, technology can help with that I think we still need to be writing and we still need to be reading all sorts of um, things but something like that you know and I'm I'm speechless at the time and I know that it's a struggle and if Ryan were here I'm, I'm sure he'd um, say we only have so much time in the day and we need to fit all of these things in but you know what about cursive we still teach cursive. We do? Yes, we do. I know we do. I don't know why that person couldn't read it. But I, there is handwriting among the board people that I can't read either. Well, Mr. Antheline is here. <laughs> Mr. Antheline is the elementary um, supervisor. Would you like to just answer that question, uh, Mr. Antheline, about teaching cursive so we get that cleared up for once? For, just come, and, just, uh, come on the Come microphone. on the microphone. <laughs> Sit down gingerly, Bob. Gingerly? <laughs> I mean, this has nothing to do with technology, but let's clear this up. Uh, what grade do we teach cursive, I guess, is the... Uh, handwriting is, is taught 
and it's part of the curriculum K through third or and or fourth grade, depending on the sites. Um, you know, like many things, there's opportunities to make it better, but we do teach handwriting throughout the grades. Especially now you're K, saying beyond, beyond, you know, printing, we're teaching cursive writing. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. In all schools and in the early grades. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. I'll sure. report back. Okay. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you all very, very much thank for being you. here. I don't think there's any more questions or comments. Good job. Fantastic. Keep it going. Keep it up. Great, great, great experience for our students.